good evening everyone i hope everyone is joining uh, i am amrita and i'll be moderate uh, moderator of this uh, twitter space twitter space along with abimel today uh, and i would like to uh, wait few more minutes for everyone to join let's wait a couple of minutes like 2 3 minutes and we will start with the session so hello everyone good evening i am amrita sri uh, gdsc lead of uh, guru gashidas vishwavidyalaya chatisgarh so i'll be moderator of today's session along with abimal so uh, as we start today's twitter space about how to conduct your first info session uh, i would like to talk about how you guys are like started your co team selected your facilitator right so next part we want to do is uh, our info session i hope everyone is clear on how to we uh, proceed further right so today we have few questions which we would like to discuss and let's start with uh, where and when to conduct our info session so i would like to call fahad to answer this question हेलो फहाद हेलो या फहाद सो आई वुड लाइक टू गिव यू दिस क्वेश्चन लाइक वेयर एंड वेन टू कंडक्ट इनफो सेशन Uh, I think Fahad is having a little bit of problem with his connection for now. Okay. Uh, is anyone available to take up this question? Formally, uh, please. Yeah, sure. Uh, in case if there's no one, I can take up the question. Uh, yeah, Kaivalya, go ahead. Uh, sure. Thank you, Amrita. So, um, I'm Kaivalya Vanguri from Geetha University, Vishakhapatnam. I uh, hope my voice is audible. Uh, yeah, yeah. Kaivalya, very much. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, great, great. Thank you. Uh, so the question was where and when to conduct info session. So that's a very, very important uh, thing because when you're actually conducting an event, you need to know uh, when, what would be a good time, and which which place would be a good time to attract your target audience. let's say uh, you are uh, conducting the info session during holidays you can you cannot expect people to come and show up if it's technically an offline offline session even if it's an online session you cannot expect people to listen to you uh, rather if there is uh, some exams or anything of that sort happening it's again hard for you to expect a crowd that's interested to listen to what you are trying to offer them so when you are actually trying to have an info session make sure the timing is perfect like something like an evening time where everyone is available uh, probably you know you can conduct a session on fridays that's a good time you can expect a good number of audience and again whatever things that i am mentioning right now are not hard and fast rules so this is applicable for my university maybe in your university the timings are different for us it's a friday uh, school so what we have is friday is kind of like a weekend for us so we usually have more events in friday on friday whereas if it's something else if it's if if it's like saturday for you then maybe you might prefer saturday so it depends on a lot of factors and as a lead as a lead you will by experience and you will know all of these things um you know soon so that's the major thing 
when you're actually in conducting an info session. So you need to consider your target audience, when they are available, whether they are, they are having any academic uh, schedules that might hinder you know, their, uh, their chance of attending your event or maybe the place that you're having the event, that place is only uh, known to a few people. All of these are very, very important factors. You cannot expect an info session being held outside the university and everyone to show up, right? So come up with a place which is more open for everyone, a place which, which has that ambience for you to conduct a student-friendly interactive session and for everyone to feel that welcoming you know, environment. So I think uh, that would, that's all that I could uh, say for this. Anything, if anyone would uh, want to add on to this, they are most welcome. Yeah, uh, I would like to add uh, a few things like uh, the mode of conducting the info session. Like, so in my part of India, like in Kerala, we are having a vacation right now. So uh, there might be vacations for some people and elsewhere also. So you could actually choose to conduct your info session in online mode if it's if, if it's what that's what comfortable for your audience. So make sure to choose a platform like whether it's offline or online, make sure all the participants or all the community members can join the event, like in the info session, so that they get to know more about the topic, uh, what GDS is and everything. So make sure to choose a platform that's suitable for your audience. Okay, yeah, that's what I had to add. Yeah, thank you Kaivali and Fahad for the valid add-ons in the conversation. So uh, I would like to inform the crowd that uh, please write your queries in the thre thread and make it continuing. And and Fahad, getting back to you, I uh, I heard you telling about the platform requirements. What would be uh, what skills and technologies can students learn? Students learn through GDSC activities. Can you take up this question? Uh, hello. You're not audible. Yeah. Yeah. Now uh, you're audible. Yeah. Not, okay. Yeah. Uh, about the skills and things that you could learn from GDSC is basically like the main thing is that you could learn about a lot of leadership things related to as you are a lead, you will be leading your community. You'll get a lot more experience in the leadership part because uh, you'll be leading your core team, you'll be assigning and delegating works to your core team, and you'll be conducting a lot of events. So basically, you'll get the whole structure about the leadership, and that's the primary thing that you'll be learning. And now coming to the technical part. augmented reality while I was in GDSC because of the community that were in uh, in the Google and all that. So that really helps you to get at the tech skills. Like you'll be having campaigns and lot uh, on the coming days uh, regarding the GDSC. So along with your community members, you'll also get the chance to learn text like Google, GD, through GDSC. So make sure you find your time to learn the, those texts and try to uh, teach that, those texts that you learn while you are in GDC to your, your own community. That really helps you to build up the communication skills, the tutoring skills, and as well as to enrich your knowledge about the tech. tech. A broad spectrum of technical skills as well as uh, learning a lot of things throughout the GDC activity center. Yeah, that's, yeah, definitely. that's what I have. Yeah, Fahad. Yeah, that's a really uh, long breaking list of advantages we can get from the skills and technologies that we gather from the GDSC activities. This is majorly a question that the leads, the new leads have to be answering to their students or the target audience. So uh, moving up to like the general queries, like are there any uh, prerequisites for uh, joining GDSC or attending its events. Kaivalya, 
are you available for this question um sure amrita that's an interesting question firstly yeah. um so yes uh what are the prerequisites for joining gdsc most people have this on their brains they might be thinking okay i need to be technically sound or i might need to learn a google developer technology or maybe i'm 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 supposed to be an orator a natural speaker or maybe i should have this skill that skill but basically all you need to have is the interest the, the interest and willingness to learn grow upskill and connect with the community that's out there waiting for you to get better so what is the prerequisite exactly the prerequisite for joining your gdsc should be their interest and willingness to contribute to the google developer student community so they need to have that interest they should be able to learn learn and grow they need to be in such an environment they should have the understanding of such an environment that they have to learn they have to be in dynamic environments so there there is the only main thing the only hindrance in this entire thing is their interest if they lack the interest then they cannot be in gdsc they do not have to already know google developer technologies like yeah it's it's a great thing if they already know google developer technologies i would not say that's a wrong thing but even if they do not lack a very very strong technical profile they can always develop it if they are interested to do so so the major thing is they need to understand what gdsc is they need they should be able to give to the society they should be able to give to the community at large the major thing is they need to be outgoing if they are outgoing if they have the ability uh, to come out of their comfort zone they they have to come out of their horizons to understand the developer and coding culture and be able to contribute then they are a perfect uh, symphony for the entire club they'll be an asset for the club they should be having the ability to connect with people understand people understand the community's requirements and work with people all they have to be is willing to be in the club willing to work for the club willing to be a leader no matter whether they are a member of the club whether they are just a community member or whether they are they are the gdsc lead leader being a leader is something that they have to have it innately in order to join gdsc in that way everyone will be self motivated to have the gdsc up and going in their club so this is like a short brief uh, you know answer that i can give for this question like i yeah, we can yeah it, it loads really it. answer the most of the question but you know we have a lot of doubts in this brains and you know it's yeah. not just only the leads are having doubts even they have to be answerable to their community and stuff so i think you, we have a lot of question for you as well so stay till the end and yeah. um, next we have the question what is the structure of gdsc in uh, in post session can be or like the agenda abimal are you ready uh yeah amrita yeah yeah go ahead okay so uh, this is one of the important questions like uh, structure of a gds info session so maybe the uh, am i audible amrita definitely you should go uh, yeah okay so uh, maybe uh, like most of the newly selected gds leads have uh, maybe they won't have so much experience of uh, planning and organizing events so uh, it is necessary for uh, a gds lead to know uh, how uh, the gds info session to work and uh, what structure it, it must have so first of all uh, like uh, uh, the first point is like what is gds so the uh, so the first part of a gds info session should be explaining uh, the community members that uh, what is gds so you should expect that 
uh, the community members uh, don't know what is DDSC. Maybe there will be first year students. Uh, maybe you are you are the founder lead. So yeah, none of the students may know about GDSC. So consider that and uh, include uh, uh, include some slides. So if you include points explaining what is GDSC. So uh, make them understand that uh, GDSC is a global community by Google and uh, uh, and uh, what are they are doing and uh, just explain what is GDSC. Okay. So I think you had uh, completed your onboarding meetings and also I I, I, I I assume that you you know what is GDSC you are all selected as GDSC leads so you know what is GDSC okay so the next thing uh, is uh, uh, goals so uh, what are the goals of GDSC okay as a club uh, GDSC and as a club by Google itself so GDSC have some specific goals so uh, some of the goals are like uh, uh, explaining like, no no not explaining uh, <laughs> Um, making the community members aware of the Google technologies, make them skilling up in Google technologies like Flutter, Kotlin, Combos, uh, and all. And uh, another thing is like uh, making the students more innovative, like example through solution challenge and all. Uh, GDSC make the students uh, to become uh, more innovative, to bring out more innovative innovative ideas and all, to work as a team and all. So make them aware of the goals of GDSC. And uh, the next point is like importance of a community. So uh, GDS is one among the different communities existing in India. So uh, maybe uh, they, are, they are the people maybe in, in my case, uh, when I introduced GDSE to my college, uh, people don't know what is a community. So uh, there, there, isn't, uh, there wasn't any community culture in my college. So uh, it is very important to make them aware of the importance of a community. Uh, so uh, working together, so learning together and the importance of uh, being in a community. Okay, that is an important thing. And uh, the third point is like if you if you have a formal lead available or uh, in your college or if you have any uh, connections with other uh, GDSC leads, former GDSC leads, you can bring them and uh, you can uh, make them share their experience. That will be a uh, awesome part uh, in a GDSC info session. So, uh, so uh, you will be telling uh, about GDSC, but uh, for them to uh, uh, to trust into tr to become uh, more trustworthy into GDSC program uh, it will be great if we share uh, if we uh, offer an opportunity to the former GDSC leads to share their experience in the GDSC info session okay then you can uh, share the next part is like uh, you can share your one year community plan I think uh, after the GDSC onboarding session or uh, any other notification from the uh, Google DevRel you might be aware of the whole program in the year all a whole journey as a GDSC lead so make them aware uh, aware of the uh, what are the programs we are doing in the uh, in the past uh, uh, in the next uh, one year okay so uh, it will be great to uh, great uh, to them to uh, like <laughs> uh, to join the community and to uh, be active okay so uh, the next point uh, or the last point may be like core team announcement or core team call so uh, if you haven't uh, uh, selected the core team you can publish the core team call or, or like something like volunteer call inside the meeting uh, and uh, in the in the gdsc info session or else if you had already selected the core team you can announce the core team there also and uh, it's also important to uh, um, introduce the faculty advisor to the students okay so uh, and uh, make them aware that she's uh, she's a uh, she's the faculty coordinator and uh, uh, this will help the students uh, aware that uh, make them aware that the gdsc is uh, um uh, is uh, uh, doing the activities uh, by uh, by the help of the institution itself okay so these are the points and if you find anything useful to add uh, uh, you can add this in the gds info session okay yeah Bimal, that's a great plan <laughs> i would like to see and as all of the formal leads are experienced with giving a lot of sessions and you know workshops and what not we even got uh, even the google wow which was conducted offline in different states so uh Abhimal, i hope uh you're from google uh kerala so who all can be the speakers of gdsc info session and how it will help with the uh help the audience and i would like to hear more of the google wow perspective because you know we had a lot of speakers and sponsors and even guests who not so Abhimal? Uh, yeah, am I audible? Yeah, yeah. 
uh, so yeah so uh, about the gdsc uh, like info session speakers coming into that point uh, like uh, uh, as i told in the last part uh, uh, the uh, one thing the present lead maybe there will be a present lead you all can uh, can be the speaker of the uh, of the gdsc info session and uh, another part is like uh, the ex lead or the former lead can also be the speaker okay this is the two ways and uh, the third third thing is third way is like uh, you can combine these two okay maybe uh, the present lead can uh, can share what is gdsc what is uh, like about the one year plan and all and uh, you can uh, you can welcome or you can uh, invite your former lead to uh, explain and uh, share their experience okay so this is a good idea about uh, like combining your experience uh, combining the experience of the former lead and uh, com- and with your uh knowledge about gdsc and uh, with your planning uh for the club okay that will uh, that will be helpful for the community and uh you can uh, the you can ask the present lead to if you are a, if last year you you your college had a club you can also share the success stories and projects done by last year gdsc that is like a uh like success stories means uh, maybe like through gdsc or gdc programs maybe students had learned a new thing uh, maybe through that they uh, they might uh, get some internships uh, get some inter- uh, placements and also you can share that and other things like do example through solution challenge if uh, some uh, some team from your college had uh, uh, had selected into the selected for the uh, finals and, or something uh, you can share that it will always motivate the uh, motivate the crowd okay so uh, that is uh, that is what uh, maybe combined with uh, gdac info session and uh, this is uh, this is the advantage of having a pr- formal lead in your info session and about wow uh, it is uh, it uh, you can always explain about wow because uh, maybe the uh, present lead can't explain about wow a former lead uh, uh, inviting a former lead uh, can help you uh, in that way also the a former lead can explain about wow and all so uh, you guys also it, it will be better you guys also know what is wow so wow was a uh, was a flagship event by google uh, last year we had uh, we had wow in uh, i think 17 plus cities in india and uh, in in our case i can experience uh, i can share my experience of wow in uh, my uh, state that is kerala uh, i was the uh, lead um, poc and lead organizer of the wow in kerala so we had conducted three uh, wows in different cities of kerala so the first uh, first one was the national level hackathon which was done uh, uh, which was a national level hackathon and it was only in uh, only hosted by kerala uh, in calicut and uh, i think uh, 30 plus teams came there offline uh, and uh, uh, and uh, we selected three teams and they were awarded with cash awards and all so uh, and uh, uh, and we also hosted many workshops there uh, workshop series there uh and the second part was a startup conclave where, where we explain about the entrepreneurship I mean, we invited many founders entrepreneurs uh, and uh, um and uh, many people from startup uh, areas we invited them and uh, they had shared their insights about entrepreneurship and uh, uh, startups and all uh, about uh, startup uh, um, startup ideas about uh, uh about uh, about fund uh, funding and all, how to get funding for the startup and also it was uh, it was uh, wow trivandrum we hosted in trivandrum and uh, it was all about uh, entrepreneur thing and the final thing was a startup uh, summit uh, sorry wow summit and it was uh, it, it was uh, conducted in uh, kochi uh and uh, and uh, we have we had uh, nikita ma'am and tanvi ma'am they were uh, present offline there so uh, it was uh, we all planned uh, from uh, 2020 to december we had uh, a team of uh, gdsc kerala uh, like uh, as a team of 36 leads so you guys can also uh, do that do this kind of things in the future and uh, we had 36 leads uh, we had 130 volunteers we had selected we had interviewed the volunteer so we had eight plus teams like technical team design team and several other teams and uh, this was a uh, um, uh, our wow was a hard work 
uh, is a result of the hard work of uh, six months and yeah like these are uh, so every state every wow team can every formal lead uh, might have some uh, experience what uh, similar to what i said so this will be helpful if these experience are shared to the new community members this will help uh, he uh, help them uh, this will be helpful for the community to motivate the community members so uh that is what the speakers about the speaker so in, uh, try to uh, try to invite your formal lead if you don't have a formal lead try to connect with any other leads any other formal leads in any, any of the uh, uh, uh any of the uh, any of the colleges uh, through linkedin and all uh, each and every person are willing to help you okay you just connect with them through linkedin or something okay that is what i have to tell about this amanda yeah bimal that's like such a great experience it's as you said it's yeah it's really motivating like even uh, to listen for me as well as a formal lead and uh, i know it's giving a lot of ideas for the newer uh, new leads as well so i would like to ask bristy as well like uh, your experience of taking in four session as a, a fresh gdsc lead yeah now you are a formal lead but how was that experience bristy uh, yeah thank you uh... Amrita, am I audible? Yeah, Bristi. Yeah. Yeah. So when I conducted my info session last year, um, I took it in a small room. It was offline because we had classes at that point, and um, our colleges kind of have this sort of orientation session for all the years, um, every annual year, right? So maybe when the first years come in. we kind of had this sort of schedule that would be uh, conducted by the college itself and we were given like around 30 minutes each for every class so we had to conduct like 6 to 7 info sessions to like accommodate all the people in the college and we had to do it in small classrooms because it was not possible to book the hall because they had some other things going on there so taking that into account we had a pretty good time even though it was a short time so what i did was i invited my former leads so uh, i was the fourth lead in our college so i already had three people before me and i brought them all because they were all amazing people they still are amazing people uh, the first lead is uh, like um is a startup founder and he is basically doing very well at dynofy which is his company so he kind of gave a sort of like um, a new outlook like how gdsc and entrepreneurship kind of helped him to build this company as a whole so that was one perspective which was very different from the others so the second lead who was there kind of talked about her experience with internships and skill development uh, related to like programming and all of that which uh she got uh, like help from gdsc uh flagship events like gcp and all of those google cloud events right so those helped her uh so these are the things like everybody had a different outlook uh to provide and um, that is a very good thing if you are able to have a lot of people at your uh, event then like for us it was like a big event sort of thing like we had different um classes to go to we have to repeat the same thing over and over but it was worth it because at the end i explained how um, we were going to go forward did a sort of like introduction of the core team itself and the core team does this for example somebody who is the web lead that person explain how the web team would function for this year or a year later so that is something that you can keep in mind while doing your info session and i also uh, appeared in this year's info session as the ex lead uh, so this current lead of our college invited me and i gave my own experience as a lead and what i learned from gps so that could be something that you show in your info session so uh, like in this case our info session was again offline but it was held in the hall instead of like in small classes So it was much easier to uh, like you know talk to people. So here you get to know that you know maybe you will have different types of info session as we go forward. Maybe you will have to do it more than once. But um, 
each and every one of them will be slightly different from the other and you will get to learn a lot of things from here and also get a lot of people who are uh, interested in gdss yeah brusti and uh, like that was really really like you know it it just explained a lot it was a great experience and it feels so nostalgic like you know i was i was someone who is like so nervous about in front of a crowd or something and you know that's that's really so stressful for me to just start something that i didn't had experience of and listening from you it just you know i just feel like it's a kind of achievement and i hope each and every lead here like this year they will be having some such such uh, successful stories i would like to see and um, abimal do you want to add any of your experience uh, yeah like uh, actually like uh, it is a great experience of being a gdsc lead uh, like from the uh, from the day one of uh, starting uh, starting with the info session like you will be uh, you all will feel that uh, you had some responsibility and it's a it, it's obviously a great responsibility and uh, like we all are former leads and uh, after after graduating from leads uh, after gradu- graduating from the gdsc program Uh, actually we understood the importance uh, like we we were, we are more into gdsc and also uh, that is uh, that uh, so we are just uh, making you aware that uh, don't waste your time make use of the opportunities as a gdsc yeah. so from the first uh, info session itself uh, y- you have some superpowers so make use of that that's all that's all yeah and i request all the listeners to please continue the threads and ask all of your queries as uh, abimal take the lead from now abimal yeah yeah sure yeah so thank you amrita for leading this session till now so it was a great time uh, thank you amrita uh, and uh, i think uh, the next person uh, like i th- i asked brishti uh, can you answer the question like what resources does uh, gdsc provide to help students to learn and grow yeah sure so gdsc has some flagship programs like android study jams machine learning study jams and all of these events one after another which you will get from uh, your email newsletters from like Uh, GDSC itself, right? So all of you have uh, attended that um, orientation program that you had to go through after like becoming a lead, right? So over there they could have given you a like timeline where it's a sort of tentative timeline where they tell you what are the things they are going to do in the future, right? So all of those programs are very important if you want to like you know uh, improve on yourself or help others improve. so that is where the resources come in you also have other resources like attending workshops conferences which you yourself might hold or you may find other people hosting and you can join them and uh, through hands on projects and real world experience that you are building uh, from these uh, flagship events students can improve their technical skills uh, which is very important in today's world and also you will find yourself learning how to uh, perfect your public speaking skills like let's be honest except for a few people we are all there standing on the stage for the first time and you know you do not know how to speak you are just stuck there you don't know you have stage fright so uh, these events where you are the uh, like speaker or you know you are hosting the event helps you understand uh, leadership leadership skills more and also it helps you like um, helps you with your digital skills and like you know overcoming that fear of public speech and stuff so uh, if i have to like uh, give examples from my time i would say uh, there were a few people who managed to like uh, build their startup because of a flagship even from google uh, i think it was called google for startups and um, they managed to get quite a lot of money to like you know as a investment from google itself to like you know build their startups 
so these are the small things that you get resources from google that will help you in the long run right okay brishti okay so uh, i think uh, brishti had answered one of the important questions uh, that uh, uh, every gdsc lead can face so uh, your community members uh, maybe ask this questions to you so what are, or, uh, what resources do you provide to help them okay i think uh, brishti asked in a nice way uh, so i think uh, i will share one question uh, asked by one of that indies Mm, uh, pratyush bahari he asked uh, how to make students interested to attend any sessions because i have seen folks uh, in brackets especially from tie three or tie four colleges are not much interested in attending those sessions okay this was asked by pratyush bahari uh, anybody like to take up this question um sure uh, abhi Uh, so yeah, I think uh, Kaivalya and Brishti are uh, ready to answer. Like uh, uh, Brishti, can you answer first? Uh, yeah. So basically, for us, I am not sure if this will work for you, but for our college, it is basically like since we had earlier leads, we had some swags which we could like you know give to other people, and we could like we did a sort of sort like a small icebreaker where we did some questions related to Google itself. and uh, the audience anyone who answers like gets a small sticker or like you know a small thing like branded or maybe just a simple uh, college kit maybe they get a pen from google or they get a sticker from google something like that like the swag that were left over from the last year we used those so this will not be applicable to the people who are starting their uh, like you know uh, class for the first time they will have to like find other means but mostly um, to get the students engaged it's better to like you know um, talk to them on their level not like a completely professionalized but more on a friendly level so that they themselves can answer a few questions and maybe like you know give some questions that they are like you know um, thoughtful about yeah yeah so uh, kaivalya can you add your points also to that Yeah, sure, Abhimel. So, as Brishti mentioned, she almost mentioned the entire part. So, if I have to add on something to it, the important thing would be, um, if you are actually having a session, a technical session. So, mostly, tier three and tier four people have this inhibition. Whenever they attend any um, technical session, they have this inhibition that okay, the people they are the whatever they're gonna talk, it's for sure. it's going to go above their heads and not into their heads so what you have to uh, so firstly when you actually talk to them uh, you know the one who's actually explaining any kind of any person who's actually explaining the facilitator or anyone any speaker who's in the info session he has to make sure that that session is lacks much of terminology if you have a lot of terminology and jargon language is like hey i am talking this about blah blah uh, we are talking about functions or something of that sort if you use a lot of too many term uh, technical terms it it might just scare away uh, the people who are attending and obviously you lose their attention and their interest but if you make the session as um, simplified as possible as interactive as possible using two three languages probably because this is a student based interaction you do not have to be formal and professional in the way you approach so you can go with vernacular uh, i mean uh, vernacular languages as well like for us it's telugu so when i uh, when i had my android development session back then i used to flip among two languages two to three languages sometimes i used to say certain things in hindi and that used to catch the attention of my hindi audience uh, i used to uh, speak in telugu so that people used to understand uh, what i whatever i am trying to explain um and and i obviously use english so we do not have to, we should we should not only stick to one language okay just because is some technical info session you have to talk in english it's not the way the major focus should be your audience what can they perceive they should understand it maybe you can come up with metaphors like uh you can come up with some filmy movie metaphors if they are more into movies it depends on your audience entirely 
so to grab their attention you can make use of some placards some presentations make it as visually uh, profound and beautiful so that it keeps their attention at you so that they can understand what they whatever you're trying to tell them so this is the major thing because mostly entire three entire four colleges people are not quite comfortable with english and that is a limitation a very big limitation when you're actually dealing with them even though they're intellectually sharp even though they understand the logical part of how to create a website or how to develop an app the major thing is okay now i don't understand english and this lady here is speaking in english i won't be able to understand so that that feeling is stopping them to pay interest that's the major uh, drawback so we should not have any language barriers when we are actually explaining things to people or having an info session that is one thing and once you grab them at least for one session if you win their hearts believe me they'll come back again and again and your session will be going on smooth so that's like my take that's what i can say um if there's something else that anyone would like to add on then they might add on otherwise that's it from my end uh thank you kaivalya and thank you brishti uh, is there anybody to add something to that anybody no ormal uh, they answered it completely oh okay fine okay so i think pratyush uh, you got the answer from uh, from brishti and kaivalya okay so uh, the next question uh, is to kaivalya uh, what a community member can expect from gdsc community so maybe uh, a community member is asking to a gdsc lead what can i expect from the uh, the community you are specifying it is a question to a gdsc lead so kaivalya can you answer that yeah so that's a very important question the reason being when uh, whenever you actually talk about gdsc even i did that whenever we talk about gdsc we say uh, we are talking about google developer student clubs so when the name google comes into the students mind they start having over expectations frankly speaking this is something that you that every lead will experience in their entire info sessions or any session that they have they always expect okay now if i am in this club i'll get credited by google like this by that so most people do not uh, they they forget what is gdsc completely they some people don't even know what is gdsc so it's hard for keeping people's expectations to such an extent that they are motivated but not over enthusiastic about what the club does so they so that they do not have a misinterpretation of what gdsc is so there here is a thing expecting something is one thing and having an over expectation on a community is also one thing so the major thing whenever you are actually talking about gdsc whenever you are canvassing about gdsc is you should make sure that gdsc is a student club you are learning about google technologies you do have benefits as in you can connect to people you can learn from people you can get expert advices from google developer experts you can connect to them on personal basis you can have uh, mentor sessions with them but you that, that this does not guarantee a seat in google or a position in google that is something that you need to uh, make explicitly uh, i mean make people know that explicitly so this is a major thing that's an over expectation that i'm trying to say and when you're actually canvassing don't even uh, you know under keep under expectations on uh, gdsc because that's another thing if you don't uh, canvass at all that's an under expectation uh, so it's it's like you need to balance it off and how do you balance it is you can talk about what gdsc actually offers so there is a very popular motto of gdsc connect learn and grow try sticking as close as possible to that tagline because that is the crux of what you do in gdsc you connect with people you grow with them and you learn on the go so this is the major thing this comprises of everything the learning doesn't only mean 
on a technical side but this also helps you to understand an organizational behavior to have to enhance your interpersonal skills it it comprises of everything it develops a personality in you so that is the learning part growing it completely is in your hands you can connect with various people they do not have to only belong to your university from some somewhere else they can be uh, completely from some another country like we had an info session from a person who came from vietnam he is a google developer expert in cloud so you can connect with different kinds of people so make sure when you are actually talking about gdsc and telling people about gdsc make sure they understand the importance of what you can actually get when you're connecting with people from all over the world the cultural um, apart from the cultural differences the way you can actually understand a lot of disciplinaries not just on a technical side but also on the side of social and cultural differences you can understand how a community is outside the world outside india uh, how they connect with each other what is a proper etiquette to talk to people it's a complete package of personality development plus career development gdsc is a place where you can learn grow and connect so you you have to talk to people in such a way that they understand what gdsc is it's a student club it is a student club and you do get swags you do get rewards for what you're doing but that should not be the only motivation behind what you do so make sure you do emphasize that you do get swag certificates and all the materialistic benefits that are you know more colorful and glittery but make sure they understand the true value behind the connect learn grow motto behind gdsc so this is uh, this as a lead is something that you have to know when you're actually uh, talking about how you can grab a person's attention towards gdsc and keep them in such a way that they don't have over expectations and under expectations just the perfect balance of expectations from the community hope this answers my question yeah kaivalya i think it perfectly answered the question uh, uh, thank you kaivalya for detailing all those uh, your experience and answering the question uh i think uh, we can go for a question uh, asked by uh, one of the attendees uh, shubhangit jain so uh, shubhangit hi shubhangit thank you for asking the question so uh, he is asking that uh, tomorrow is my info session in offline mode any key points to remember okay this is what he and uh, this is what he asked uh, any leads uh, take up this question anybody amrita do you like to take up yeah abhimel can you please kai uh, okay kai well yeah okay yeah i mean i couldn't hear you clearly back yeah abhimel can you repeat uh so shubhang asked uh, like tomorrow is my info session in offline mode uh any key points to remember that is what he asked Okay, this yeah. should be the first question to ask. It's so much in hurry. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, uh, I would like to say, like, just be confident about it, and uh, I hope it would. This is your first session, and I don't know. It might be your first session, so just. I'm a speaker. Wait. So, uh, just be so confident about it, and if there is any mistakes. just don't think about it because in the year long you will be having you will be need to take a lot of more sessions so just be confident about it kaivalya want to add something um that's pretty much it i guess whatever all of us talked is you know pretty much the crux uh only thing is because you have your short on time the best thing is make sure you do have a venue in your hand if you do then that's a that's a first thing that you are supposed to be sure of and yeah, you have, have permissions everything. have everything ready yes yes absolutely and i have a great suggestion from my uh, previous uh, gdsc lead that is to maintain a diary 
and of course i have a separate diary for my uh, journey as a gdsc lead so i used to like you know do anything for gdsc i used to write take that take that up and write so that is a really great advice to just take because one year is such a less time that it just passes and you guys will definitely uh, forget what had your uh, what was your journey and what were the mistakes you have done and just note down at least the po- uh, the uh, little pointers about what you learned today from gdsc and i hope the book gets filled by the end so i think it, this is a great suggestion that i can pass on yes. yeah the man okay any any other person like to add uh, fahad or brishti okay fine so i think uh, kaivalya and uh, uh, amrita uh, had answered the question very well so uh, what amrita told was exactly true like uh, we also like uh, like uh, no, uh, noting all things down in a notebook or something is a great thing and uh, don't feel bad to uh, have a notebook while you speak in the in the crowd so that is not a, even uh, <laughs> even experienced speakers uh, do have some do note it down the points and uh, in the podium they will look and say that that is not uh, uh, for a leader it is not a it is uh, it is always good to have a note and all so don't worry about that and uh, be confident and you specified that this is an offline event so uh, make them uh, so everybody is uh, watching you so uh, f- uh, so be confident about that so what that is a uh, important uh, co- quality for a leader so if you are confident uh, obviously people will follow you or people will uh, obviously uh, follow what you say and all okay that is what i also like to add to that okay fine so uh, the next question is like uh, maybe a person like uh, uh, a gdsc lead uh, will always confuse uh, before uh, before uh, organizing a gdsc info session uh, to who are the target audience that that will be a great confusion to uh, a gdsc lead so uh, i think amrita will answer that who are the target audience for gdsc leads amrita yeah abhimal uh... this is like this should be the primary question like after you think of where and when so the target audience yeah definitely and looking forward to what our community is actually google developer student clubs so the primary audience i would like to point out are the like if you are from third year or fourth year definitely your juniors like the first second branch uh, for second years uh, because why i tell this because they are like Uh, having their dreams they want guidance and all benefits they could practically use so i would like to see the first and second years of your own college and if you uh, talk about what in a major perspective who can be the target audience it w- it would be students interested in technology in google technology any there were there was a long list of uh, 14 i think uh, google technologies there are a lot and if you dive into one you would just have to become expert and uh, there are a lot of hackathons and uh, workshops conduct- will be conducted through google so google gdsc so i would like to see uh, you guys can add who are outside of the your college and interested in participating in such hackathons so definitely like tech enthusiastics and uh, uh, majorly you guys can even add uh, students who are from diverse backgrounds uh, and interested in or uh, google technologies and it could be engineering students and in my college i am from a central university which is which has a diverse background of students from mathematics even physical education uh, forestry who not but we have a lot of coders like you know diamonds and uh, soil so we have a lot of great coders in our college who are like really diverse backgrounds and you can also con- contact to um, a previous attendees of last year of your club and if there are any clubs or groups or um, any anything uh, co- any communities any coding communities or people who are interested in co- programming so such people you guys can gather and have a great uh, gdsc experience for your community and this uh, i would like to say target audience are not always the same 
set of people you guys need to try experimenting on different set of people so guys so you guys can uh, analyze what is your range so this is something that i want to say and uh, if anyone want to add anything that i have missed by mistake uh, you guys are uh, allowed yeah kaibalya brishti or abhiman uh okay amrita i think you had covered everything uh i think no uh, no leads will uh, leads will no longer have a confusion of uh, who or should be the target audience okay great so uh, next we have a question from uh, avik mukherji and uh, he had asked uh, just a query in terms of gdsc uh, leading uh, how to get the sponsors for our gdsc community for hosting events uh anybody like to take up this question um, sure abimel i can take up this question in case if there's no one so okay. uh, yeah as abimel just mentioned i was also part of gdsc wow in my uh, in my region andhra pradesh so i was a regional poc and i had to literally go to do- door to door to get the sponsorship and all of the uh, you know the ruckus that you can expect and the important thing is the way you project yourself so when you're actually going to an organization or any company for sponsorship you should understand what should uh, you should understand or you should think on in their shoes so how they think is okay if i help them if i Uh, help this community what am i going to benefit with so you should be able to tell them that okay our audience is going to be some thousand members and you will be having uh, 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 an opportunity to uh, promote yourself promote your services showcase your products within this thousand people and this is how much you can expect this is the uh, amount of uh, viewership that you will get if you have the survey and all the technical stuff in graphs and in visualizations everyone i mean any kind of company would love to collaborate with you and sponsor your event but the major key thing is how you project your event so let's say you are you have uh, you have you have an event of a technical fest probably just like in gdc wow we had a technical fest so you you are also having a technical fest you you should be able to say okay we are held we are holding this technical fest in this particular university where there are 30000 students so for for example in our university there are around 30000 students and if you say this figure this figure itself will catch the attention of the company or organization so when you're going to them make sure you catch their attention so you should not be like we have a technical fest we are going to um, hold a few sessions on cloud they are not bothered what you are actually going to deliver but they are bothered on what they can get benefited from so if you can say this is the number of customers i am bringing to you so you have a chance to grab these many people's attention you have a chance to promote your product or showcase your uh, services to these many people and if you are going for a relevant company a relevant software based company or or a relevant student based company let's say you are going for a stationary uh, you know a stationary organization or a stationary building uh, company those people would love to collaborate with you the reason is their target audience is anyway students and you are providing them students so the same the same thing applies you cannot go for a uh, uh, some a completely different organization expect them to help you out because you should be able you should be able to understand their needs first so when you're sponsor when you're going for a sponsorship make sure you're actually choosing the right person as your sponsor because that's the major thing you go to anyone it, it doesn't work that way you need to know what you need what what kind of person you need what kind of help do you need sometimes the organization if it's a technical organization as well they might not want to help you uh in in terms of monetary transactions but they might want to help you in kind in the sense they do not want to give you money directly but they want to give you some swags instead so you should 
you should analyze okay will these swags be enough or do i really need some amount so if you need some amount you need to uh, go for someone who who is willing to give you that amount and the one of the major things is you know after even even after you get all of this deal done make sure you get it on paper make sure everything is legal and documented make sure your organization whoever is uh, representing your club make sure you ha- your faculty advisor is involved because whatever you're dealing with is the real world money matters so this is very important that you don't just do, do it um, you know on your own but take someone else's help a per- preferably a person who has knowledge in this a person who is elder to you your faculty advisor it could be a mentor but someone whom you can rely upon and make sure they know what's happening so that you know at the end of the day neither you nor the organization will face any trouble with the uh, whatever uh, contract that you have signed with so that is the uh, crux of entire structure of how you actually deal with the sponsorship and i have already i think i've already ans- answered the part of how you can get the sponsorship it all depends on your audience so if your audience is students go for technical uh, you know student related organizations if your audience is something else you, sh- you need to go for a relevant organization so uh, that's it from my end anyone is is there is, is anyone uh, interested in adding on to this no kai but you have completely answered the question abimal please go ahead with the next one i Did think kai willia had yeah i think kai willia had answered uh, uh, answered in every angle as uh, she she was the poc of gdc wow she had uh, faced many difficulties and many opportunities uh, of sponsorship i know that and uh, so uh, one thing uh, avik mukherji like uh, while uh, while doing the sponsorship make use of your tagline the gdsa lead you can connect to anybody or you can send to proposal to anybody using that tagline okay so recognize the uh, super power of what you have the gdsa lead that uh, tagline okay that's all from my side uh, so uh, next we have a question uh, and uh, that is how should we strategize the time allotted or time taken for gdsc info session to boost your um, club membership and support how should we strategize the uh, time allotted for the orientation session to boost your club membership and support and this question is to kaivalya um yes sure abhimin so that's an important thing like for example you have a session you are you are organizing the session it could be a one hour session it could be a 30 minute session it could also be a 5 minute session so depending on the amount of time that's allotted to you it's very important for you to strategize accordingly so let's say as brishti uh, amrita abimail fahad and everyone else mentioned you need to prioritize if you are an already established community in your university all you need to do is you can have a 5 minute your former leads experience uh session you can include another 5 minute of what all domains that your club has or and what all services that you can provide the next uh, five sessions the agenda uh the sorry the next 5 minutes would be the agenda of your club for this year the an- another 5 minutes would be um what you did earlier what 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 kind of achievements what kind of hackathons what kind of projects you have taken up as a gdsc member as a gdsc team you could include, include all of those things and how do, how do we strategize it solely depends on how you um, you cre- how you actually uh, time how you actually manage your time so for for doing all of that you you, can, you cannot do it in prompt to you need to write it down on paper you need to uh, be thorough with it you need to revise sometimes you need to revise it in such a way that you actually fit in to the time frame so let's say you have one hour time frame you cannot just go about thinking that you have the entire one hour to yourself so sometimes there are times that okay there will be 5 minutes taken away from you 
and you need to predict all of that so make sure when you have a one hour time frame make sure you speak you you come up with the content for 40 minutes and a buffer content for 10 minutes when you do that what happens is if you have more time you can expand the content but if you don't have that much time, you just cannot cut short. Okay, I'm done with my answer and I cannot just leave, right? So you need to make sure that you include all the important points. And if there is something uh, that is not quite uh, important, you can actually leave that. So for that purpose, there are a lot of, uh, you know, there are a lot of resources out there like Trello. There are a lot of apps out there that can actually manage your time properly. They can... Uh, it can divide, I mean, divide your time in such a way that you act, you can actually talk only this minute, uh, this time, and the, these are the words that you can talk. It actually even helps you prioritize. So for that, you need to firstly understand what is the major priority. The major priority of an info session is to tell your community what your community does, right? So talk about what GDSC does. The next thing, the next major thing would be what did your GDSC already do? And what is your GDSC intending to do? So these three things are the major things. Once you're done with these three things, you have essentially completed 80% of your entire info session. You do not have to talk more than that because these three things are the major questions everyone has in their mind. Once they are comfortable with uh, the idea of what GDSC is, what you have already done and what you're going, going to do, you are pretty much sorted. That's the major part. And upon that, you can build on the things like who is eligible to be a GDSC member, who is not. And you can also build on thing, other things like what kind of, uh, you know, what, uh, what kind of opportunities does GDSC hold, which is already included in the previous part. But this again, so that you, you emphasize again on marketing your community better. Uh, so that's it from my end uh, and, I'm, and I think yeah, Kai William. I think that covers a lot yeah. so uh, I think everybody could everybody uh, understood about the strategies and all to boost the club membership and support okay thank you Kai William, for answering it uh, and the next question is uh, how does GDSC contribute to students personal and professional development like uh, this can be a question that can be asked by a community member uh to a gdsc lead while you are taking the info session okay so uh uh Walsall, can you uh take up the question yeah so as far as concern about your personal and like professional growth so gdsc is a very like nice platform here you will make a, a nice network where uh, you can connect with anywhere like uh through my in one year, I have made a very nice friend. So those speakers, those who are speaking right now, Kevalje, Amruta, uh, Abdrashti, and Virat, and Tushal, all are here. So like we have met through GDC only previously. We didn't know anyone. So it's a power of community. Like we make a diverse audience and we make a diverse friend. Like uh, I have never imagined in my life that I have a friend in Kerala, that I would, I would have a friend in even like Kashmir in Jammu. So that's the power of community. And second, if you consider your personal or like a professional growth. So if you want to like uh, try a off campus placement or something like that. So like uh, recently what happened in my our college, the persistent company has come up. So like everyone was confused, like how is their recruitment process and everything. So I have a network, uh, like one person or two person who was working in persistent. So they have guided me very well. And me and my friend, like we connected with them. And like my friend is like killer. Actually, I didn't. So that's the different case. But yeah, so it's the power of your network which you make in one year and also a very nice friend and also your management and technical plus your uh, uh, time management skills uh, develop. So these are the things which you get after GDC. So I will say uh, take it seriously or like uh, give as most you can. And also the team building and the leadership skills, which is currently right now uh, very demanding when you go for your placements. 
and also your confidence build up so these are the some skills so enjoy your one year journey i will say and yeah i will also uh, thank you to all the speakers who has joined here basically if, let me give my introduction i guess i forgot so i am a vatsal i am from mit academy of engineering pune i was a former lead there and to be honest if i say i will become a gdsc lead in my college without being a team member in my gdsc like previously i was not a part in my gdsc then again i have conducted a gdsc wow pune as kevalya and abhimal has conducted in their region so you can follow this gdsc wow pune oh sorry gdsc wow page here so uh, you will get update like uh, we are planning on 29 one more twitter space so that will be our topic like how you can manage your academics and your uh, all the schedule when you are running this club so i hope there you will get a more idea so yeah this is from my side yeah valsal uh, he had answered everything uh, in a perspective of uh, uh, as a, from a person and professional development okay fine so uh, i think uh, we have covered every questions uh, is there anything any, uh, any questions by any attendees you can raise your hands you can like uh, use the emojis do you guys any have questions yeah so guys if you want to speak up so you can find a mic button below on top left or below left so there you can send us a request and we will give you a, a speaker access and also if you want to ask in you can ask in chat we are having more 5 minutes then we'll wrap up by 9:20 so i think there is a question yeah yeah uh, i think there is a question uh, uh, from gajar aryan for core team the gdsc is giving uh, <laughs> goodies and if yes when uh, they are providing banner of official gdsc with our university name uh, anybody yeah. <laughs> like to take up this question <laughs> yes i can take up see uh, the banner is i will say you might be receive a one uh, kit uh, like onboarding or you can say one design kit so there you can find uh, all the designs and the templates there so you can make your design team in your college so as such gdsc does not provide any posture and as far as consider the goodies so that's also up to you like how much you contribute uh, in one year how many events you took and how the all the gdsc leads uh, like uh, do their job so that we can't commit but yeah every year gdsc you should provide uh, some checks for a core team member it may be 4 to 5 so that depends how much you contribute and how seriously you take so if you are making your team or if you are doing something for swag so i will say that will that you are putting yourself in a very wrong scenario first of all do it your for your personal growth and then yeah definitely you will get something from gdc yeah I yeah well also i think uh, you had covered that uh and uh, before concluding i think every gdsc lead uh, had something in my in their mind to add up uh i think every uh, every leads can add up that points also which can be useful to them uh first we can start with the fahad fahad do you guys uh, do you have anything to add or anything you uh, like to speak as a final word or something uh, yeah just one thing like what i want i had like my experience based upon my experience And one of the things that made me as well as my GDC get recognized in the whole GDC community was a particular event that we conducted. Like, that was an event initiated to help the local businesses in my vicinity. Like, we help them to get onboarded into the Google Maps platform so that they can list their like list their shops and everything in Google. which actually i thought was a small thing and it won't be much recognized but what i what actually happened was like something we could even imagine the first recognition we got was during the wow summit in kerala this nikhil and tanvi actually mentioned this thing and 
almost every one of us were surprised the team that worked behind this and later we got that was it and that's all we won't be getting any level of higher recognition but we, we thought this was the most highest recognition and we appreciate it very much but after that we got recognized in the gdc graduation event and later on even the google devs with the uh, i was featured uh, on behalf of this particular uh, event that we conducted and like so you can also conduct unique event which may not seem to be unique but actually it might be unique in some way or the other so try to do such initiative like you can see in the gdc website you are probably gdc is something that helps local businesses and local community to strive through the students student leaders and student development so make sure to help people around you as well as make sure to help yourself with something that's relevant in the technical field as well as relevant to your community that's all i have yeah fad that is really inspiring and uh, yeah that event i also knew that event uh, had a um, special mention and all it's really inspiring to hear and i think it is really inspiring to uh, like all, all the leads present here and uh, uh, the next uh, one is like amrita do you like to add up anything or like do you have any final words to talk any uh, talk to the present leads about hosting the info session uh firstly like first things first i just want to congratulate everyone for getting selected as a uh, google developer student club's lead and there is a really really uh, adventurous journey i would like to say because it is so you will get mixed emotions you will learn different sides of uh, uh, solutions like whatever you the words that you just say you just uh, find different types of perspectives on that and there are a lot of things that you will be uh, learning and you know you will get a lot of time to explore a great network to talk to and have like some potential conversations with the experts and try to get as much as gu- guidance that you can receive and uh, there is a lot of uh, scope for you to go into industry as you go for sponsors or any guest speakers or google experts even you guys have a um, a lot of uh, a lot of chance to explore in the fields and you guys can have a uh, idea about what kind of uh, role that you can look for your uh, internships or jobs and this would be another different topic and uh, i think next next week i would like to say uh, we will be talking about uh, academics and gds you know how you balance the stuff being a gra- undergraduate so i think yeah congratulations everyone you guys need to listen a lot of people before you make decisions and uh, analyze your a- uh, actions i hope you guys heard about the strategies the target audience uh, you know the experiences of people mentioning about info session if there are any questions do uh, mention them in the threads and we guys would like to answer and next topic also is going to come next week that is uh, balancing your academics and also gdsc so just come back for that and also bring your more friends yeah we met oh, okay fine uh fine over that and that was a great experience and uh, advice and uh, next we have kaivalya kaivalya do you have uh, anything to tell uh, to those to the new leads uh nothing much all the best everyone uh i believe in you guys only thing is if you if you ever want to connect with any i mean anyone uh always feel free to reach out to me i am on linkedin with the same name kaivalya vanguri i'll be there so you can reach out to me yeah that's it for my side uh and uh, the, the next one yeah, yeah kaivalya can you Ah uh, no I was just saying all the best again that's it. Okay. Yeah. So uh Valsal do you have anything to say as final word? Mm, 
no no all the best to all of you and like uh, make uh, your gdc tenure a grand success so all the best and yeah congratulations for becoming a leader oh okay fine oh that is great Mr. Sir. so uh even i am also concluding uh like us uh, i think this uh, Twitter space is uh, very useful uh, you all uh, guys uh, find useful uh, this Twitter space so as amalda told uh, we would like to announce the next topic as uh, uh, it is uh, like managing academics and uh, GDSE community. So uh, I think this is an interesting topic. You guys will find it useful. So uh, many other GDSC leads will also uh, be joining in the next topic. So we will uh, announce the dates and all uh, as soon as possible. Uh, so uh, from my side, uh, so nothing much. So all the best, uh, like maybe this week or something you will uh you will conduct your info session so if you find this uh, twitter space useful so uh, i think you had noted down all the points you uh, found interested so uh, just uh, try it down in uh, your uh, your info session so uh, if you have any reviews also please uh, let us know uh, everybody is waiting for your reviews and all post it on linkedin about how you uh, how you uh, make your how you conducted your info session and also it will be useful for others also to know more about and uh, as Kai Valia told everybody here will be available in different uh, uh, different platforms like Twitter, LinkedIn and uh, even many of them have their websites on website so you can uh, always connect with them so uh, you can uh, even personally get mentorship from uh, any of our former leads for if you, if you have any doubts uh, and that is all. Uh, I think we can conclude. I think uh, if you have any doubts, you can still ask. I think uh, if there is no queries, uh, we can wind up this Twitter space. Thank you all for joining. Thank you so much. And thank you the leads for uh, making this a great panel. Great. Thank you. Thank you so much, Fahad, uh, Amrita, Kaivalya, Valsal, Tusha, and Bira. Thank you so much for hosting and all. Thank you so much. Bye, guys. And uh, good night. <laughs>